1985, the Giants lost 100 games. I was on that team. We who played in that team were embarrassed. It was the only time in 140 years of Giants history that a Giants team lost 100 games. We were missing something. In 1985, it was also the year that the Giants selected Will Clark in the first round of the baseball draft. And shortly after the draft, during the College World Series, Will's team, Mississippi State, was playing and we were on the road watching it on TV. <clears throat> it was the first time I ever saw Will taking it bad and I'll never forget the moment. I was watching the best swing that I would ever play with. I thought to myself, we need to get that guy up here right now. He signed with the Giants and was sent to Fresno where he would finish out the 1985 season in A ball. And in the 65 games that Will played with the Fresno Giants, he hit 309. He hit 10 home runs, he'd knock in 48 RBIs. They would win the Cal League Championship. Before Clark got to Fresno, they were missing something. In the following spring of 1986, we all reported to Scottsdale for spring training, and the majority of us were dreading having to face the media and begin the questioning about how we'd lost 100 games and what was gonna change in 1986. We were dreading those interviews. And thanks to Will Clark, they never happened. We, we watched Will walk into Mike Murphy's clubhouse like he was a 10-year veteran and a five-time All-Star, and you couldn't help but get caught up in his swagger. He was the hurricane from New Orleans. The riders flocked to his locker, and he would hold court for the next 42 days, and we loved it. I was pitching the first game of spring training that year, and like all first spring training games, it was a game where I was just trying to get the kinks out and get over the first game jitters. It was the first day that I ever took the field with the new phenom, Will Clark. I was a 10-year veteran, and it wasn't really a situation where I was worried about making the team. Roger Craig, our skipper, had announced that I was going to be the opening day starter, so the outing was low stress. I was scheduled to throw two innings or 35 pitches, whatever came first. I walked the first guy, the second guy got a hit, and the third guy walked on four pitches. I was just about to step back on the rubber and get, pitch, and get ready to pitch to the next Brewers hitter, when I heard the high-pitched voice from first base yell, time out! I looked over at first base and here was Will Clark walking over to the mound towards me. He walked up to the mound and he said, hey, if we're gonna win this game, you're gonna have to do better than that. And so the Will Clark era had begun. By the end of spring training, Will Clark had made the team and we had become friends. When we left camp, he accepted an offer and an invitation from my wife Jennifer and I to to live his rookie season with us. He stayed two years. <laughs> in our house, he was a full-blooded rookie. And in many ways, he was just another kid in the family. He liked sugary cereal, and he liked cartoons. <laughs> he reminded you every day just how young he was until he got to the ballpark and put on the uniform. When he crossed the lines to take the position on the field every day, things changed. He changed. He would turn into a 100% baseball player with instincts so pure that you were convinced he was an old soul of the game. He strapped it on every day with one goal in mind, to win that game. That was the thrill. And he had that something. He would become the centerpiece of the Giants lineup for the next eight years. He would wear the Giants uniform five times to an All-Star game. He'd help the Giants get back to the playoffs and he'd help them get back to the World Series. But perhaps the most important thing he did was he made it cool to be a Giants fan again. His chapter in the Book of Giants was long, and it was rich, and it was rich with accomplishment. And there was not one time that we took the field with Will that we didn't think we were playing with a guy that would someday become immortal and leave his mark on the game. And today I look up at the 13 men who have had numbers retired or their name remembered, and celebrate the legends of the Giants. I applaud the accomplishment of each of the players that have been honored in the most special way by their fans, by the Giants organization. Their numbers will never be worn again. And I look at the new addition, number 22, and it warms my heart to know that his career and his talent have been recognized and honored. He has earned his place in Giants history, and he truly deserves to be remembered with the storied immortals of this franchise forever. Will, congratulations. 
and from all of us here today. Thank you. It was a privilege to watch you play.